Steve Arnold and Jeff Notkin are modern day treasure hunters. <sighs> Woo! Yeah! They travel the world in search of meteorites, the alien invaders that have been crashing into our planet for the last four and a half billion years. Okay, I think it's right under that flat rock. This is a little foolhardy even by my standards. On this expedition, Jeff and Steve go down under to hunt ancient meteorite craters. Wow! Henbury Craters at last! <laughs> <This is. laughs> Over treacherous land. Oh, this looks like fun. <laughs> there for landing. Woo! Despite adverse weather and dangerous roads. If we can't get to the site, we can't hunt. If we can't hunt, it's a total waste. Steve and Jeff hunt down a large rock from space worth thousands. Ooh. Eureka! Oh my god! That's what I'm talking about. Jeff and Steve are in the Northern Territory of Australia to hunt one of the best preserved crater fields in the world, the Henbury Meteorite Craters. Halfway around the world, we're finally pulling up on the bike to the Henbury Meteorite Craters. One of the most famous sites in the world, one of only a couple that have a crater and meteorites next to it. Somewhere around 4,600 years ago, a giant fireball came in, broke up at the last second, breaking up into 12 or 13 pieces, causing the craters that are right here at the Hembury Field. And there are at least 15 distinct meteorite craters in a very small area, ranging in size from not much bigger than a kid's paddling pool to a gigantic, awe-inspiring crater. It's the only place in the world where you can stand on a little summit and be in the center of adjacent meteorite craters of, of substantial size. Jeff and Steve have been granted a special four-day permit to hunt part of the preserve and the nearby land. Because of the hunting restrictions in this protected area, Jeff and Steve are confident large pieces of the Henbury meteorite, potentially worth thousands of dollars, remain here. Before beginning their hunt, the guys meet with Ranger Barrett to get a tour of the crater preserve and learn the lay of the land. Ranger Barrett, I presume. How's it going? It is an amazing experience to have thought about this place, studied this place, looked at photographs for 15 years. Yeah, welcome to Henbury. And finally, here I am today. It's magical and then some. So, Michael, if I remember the story correctly, the, the features were first noticed around 1901 by a local yeah. uh, landowner or rancher? Yeah, that's when it was first documented, but of course, the local Aboriginal people would have known about it much earlier. Local Aboriginal folklore refers to the area as a resting place for devils from the sky. I would imagine that the fireball would have been able to be seen maybe on all the coasts. Yeah. It would have been that bright. Henbury Craters, at last! <laughs> Crikey! Jeff's enjoying the craters. I am want to get honey. I can't get over this. There's nowhere else <laughs> in the world you could have this experience. <laughs> There's a threat that there might be weather coming in, rain. Uh, need to make the most while the, the sun's out. Well, <laughs> Jeff can die a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this is really spectacular. Really an extraordinary treat to be here. Now, I know we came to see the craters, but we also came to hunt for meteorites. So we have to balance it out. But look how amazing this is. How can you stand to leave? Is there rain <laughs> in the forecast? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, there okay. is. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we have taken up a lot of your time. It's been a genuine pleasure. Thank cool. you so much for sharing your time you and expertise. Jeez. Thanks. <laughs> Certainly never forget this day. All right, let's, let's go find some meteorites. I think the obvious thing is to look around those little craters outside the preserve. And then I think uh, there's supposed to be a couple up on that on that hill. Yeah. But, and I want to see those little craters anyway, so I think that's as good a place to start as any. Where at the little craters, we can see the big one, we can backtrack and figure out where on the ridge we want to be. Okay. Sound good? Sounds great. <laughs> A fence surrounds the main craters to protect them from erosion caused by camels and kangaroos, as well as cattle from a neighboring ranch. Hunting within that area is strictly prohibited. 
Steve and Jeff's permit allows them to hunt everything outside the fence. They begin with location one, the small craters to the south, where they expect to find iron shrapnel from the ancient collision. Hey man, it's a crater. All right, I think we need to check this area out. Most definitely. There are three types of meteorites, stony, stony iron, and iron. Because Henbury meteorites are iron, Steve and Jeff use metal detectors to locate any pieces left behind from the impact. Metal detectors broadcast an electromagnetic field. When that signal encounters a metallic object, there's a change in frequency. So if it came in from this direction, hit, exploded, there should be pieces all around it, but especially this direction. Agreed. Yeah. Hey, I got a little 13 here. 13 should be good. Iron registers somewhere between 4 and 15 on the metal detectors. Oh, there it is. Jeff, got one. Excellent. Cute little guy. All right. Numero uno. How cool is this? OK, got a little guy here. Most definitely a piece of this impactor that happened oh, 25 feet away from me. From outer space to the outback to my magnet. I got something here, Steve. What do you got, dude? Huh. Well, they're the first few pieces. But I need bigger and better. These are tiny. Got a little one. I got two little ones. All right. So the Stringfield's not all been hunted out. Agreed. All right. Let's get to it. I'm going this way. A Stringfield is created when a meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere and breaks up into pieces. Typically, the small pieces land first, while the large pieces, with greater mass and inertia, fly farther. But this is no typical Stringfield. It's a crater field, and the only one of its kind on Earth. Scientists believe the Henbury meteorite entered Earth's atmosphere on a steep, slightly northeast trajectory and broke up just before it landed, causing the pieces to hit in an unusually tight pattern. This is a meteorite crater. Wow, and you can really see the direction of flight. The meteorites came from the southwest, and they were traveling northeast. And you can kind of see how it almost hit at an angle. And that side is more splayed out, and this one's almost flat. And it's straight in a line with that little one that we looked at earlier, which means I'm going that way. A crater impact ejects meteoric shrapnel in all directions, usually in a pinwheel pattern, with a greater concentration accumulating ahead of the impact, in this case, towards the northeast. Jeff believes that by lining up these two smaller craters with the biggest, he can determine the exact direction of flight and put himself on track with the largest remaining meteorite pieces. Oh, that's a bit better. Holy crap, look at that. There is the classic Henbury meteorite. Very angular, twisted. Oh, that sounds different. Oh, you know what makes this really sweet? This is one that Jeff just walked right by. Jeff has a method of detecting where he goes really wide, and he walks really fast. If you go really small, take small steps, you can cover all the ground. He walked right over this and missed one. So that makes it sweet. How you doing? Oh. A few little ones, nothing spectacular. Yeah, I'm not finding much. <laughs> I only found one you missed. You're a genius. <laughs> Somebody dropped some money. What does that say? Pesos? I'd say some foreign meteorite hunters been out here, probably without permission. It's very naughty. I shall have to report that after I kill these flies. These flies are just... 
I've had enough. It's a mosquito hood. I'm secure in my manhood. I don't care what I look like. I'm here to find meteorites, not to be fly bait. <laughs> There's something down there in the water. Let's see if we can find something. Well, I'll be. Look at that. Fishing for meteorites underwater. Oh, I see you're wearing a very stylish fashion. Yeah. These uh, flies are starting to get to me. You look like a beekeeper. How big were the ones you were finding up there? Find a lot of? OK. 10 grams average, I suppose. It's a lot of yeah. digging for little guys. No kidding. With $500 worth of smaller fragments, Jeff and Steve are faced with a tough decision. So you want to come back tomorrow? Well, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, there's this eternal tug of war. Do you, you stick around where the little ones are, or do you go for bigger? I say we go for bigger. We already found little ones. It's not satisfying. Jeff and Steve pack up to leave location one. Tomorrow, they will hit location two, where they expect to find much larger pieces that were ejected from the violent impact. The evening of day one brings a torrent of unseasonable rain, leaving many roads closed or difficult to pass. We're here at the hotel restaurant uh, home base, and the weather is looking horrible for the next several days. Well, all the heavy gear we've brought out, not going to be able to use them in the rain. Not going to be able to drag it, yeah. Well, you know when the ground gets wet, right. it, we get full signals anyway. We've got a motorcycle that's great for, our, for being off road if it's dry. I mean, if we're driving around in quicksand, that's not going to help us any. If we can't get to the site, we can't hunt. If we can't hunt, this is a total waste. Waste of time, waste of money. The game plan now is just to uh, try to get as close as we can and, and see what it's like. We're just hoping it's just not so bad at the crater and on the road getting to the crater. So we won't know till we get there exactly how bad it is. Rain or flies, which would you prefer? <laughs> how about a little rain, a little flies, a little rain, a little flies? We already had that. Too much of one is just too bad. I think you have to view any meteorite find as a success, and we're finding a lot of small pieces here at Hembury. Small's the operative word. I'm going to do a little scouting while you're assembling All right. if you don't mind. He loves building the coil, loves it. Oh, I do, do I? Help, Jeff. I think there's something wrong with your detector, man. So I was so looking forward to coming out to the outback where it's dry and between the cold and the hot seasons and nice and mild. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? It seems that wherever we go, we get some sort of freak weather conditions that arrive just about the same time we do. I wonder oh, if... Oh, this looks nice. Yeah, let's... Uh, lower it this way, I guess. That set's no good. It's hardly reading something this size. Well, it may be the rain. The one downside using the big coils is that when it starts to rain, it starts to mess up the signal. So as of right now, with the rain coming down, it's not working. OK, go. Hey, good news is there's no flies out right now. It's incredibly frustrating to travel literally halfway around the world. If the rain keeps collecting, it's going to be really difficult to get out. With the detectors not working and the rain flooding the roads, Jeff and Steve have no choice but to pack up and head for safety. Uh, what's going on is it's pouring with rain. One of our vehicles is stuck. Everyone's soaking wet. Um, the police are going to close the road that we came in on, and we're still on the 
side of the road we don't want to be on when it gets closed. So we're trying to dig this truck out. It's really amazing how quickly this surface turns into kind of jello. I guess it's because there's so little That's rain good. here that when it does rain, it just all turns to mush. And uh, I mean, really, it's awful. It's like custard. You just, you just cannot drive in it. Let's see if we can do it. It's absolutely terrible. When the going gets tough, the tough go to the local bar. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hello. How's it going? Good, thanks. What would you like to drink? Drinks, please. We'd like drinks. We're trying to make the best of a miserable day. So Steve and I are hanging out at the bar here, and it turns out that our bartender is a very experienced didgeridoo player, or as they say here in Australia, the didge. So I heard a rumor from um, one of your staff that you're an amazing didgeridoo player. Is that? Is there any truth to that? I don't know about amazing, but I can make a bit of a noise. Well, uh, I heard glowing reports about, about your talents. Is that something that, that you've studied? Yeah. Or did you take classes or are you self-taught? No, no, just, uh, just learnt myself, yeah. Started off with a bit of PVC piping and... Took really? Yep. Yeah. PVC piping? Yeah. Oh, Steve, this would make a good didgeridoo, I bet. A didgeridoo? Hey, I'm impressed. <laughs> we could use that in Australia. I'll probably blend right in. Yeah, you'd blend right in. That's really yeah. amazing. So the idea is just uh, to find a raspberry. <laughs> it sounds like I'm playing a big raspberry. Shoulders shaking, he's laughing so hard. <laughs> Stop that, you're distracting me. This is my chair. Your lips are too tight. Too tight lips. Okay. You gotta have loose lips. Wait till you try. <laughs> This is exciting. Now I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit. So you left to go and buy one now. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You, you can't break yeah. this, can you? Nah. That was better. Yeah. Thank you so much. What do you think? <clears throat> I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what's this called when you breathe in and breathe out at the same time? <laughs> Circular breathing. That's I, good. The, the beeswax is getting caught. Oh, I think I need to be clean shaved yeah, for that this to work. It. Sounds like a bit from Dumbo. I was gonna say that like a dying elephant. 
To safely reach location two, Jeff and Steve enlist the help of an outback guide, an ex-gold prospector, with the equipment and skills to navigate the dangerous roads. We've got a lot of factors working against us, bad weather, problems with our gear, time's running out. Are you Jason? I am Jason. Good morning. How are you going, guys? I'm Jeff. This is Steve. Uh, nice, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Nice Pleased to meet you. Yeah, how are you going? So we're taking the unprecedented step of bringing someone onto the team that we actually don't even know. We've been told that the road to the Henbury Craters has been closed. Yes. And, um, yeah, that, we, uh, we, we want to get there anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so when they close the road, do they actually barricade it shut? Yeah, generally they put one of those yellow and black barricades saying uh, road closed to, uh, to warn you off it. So uh, hopefully we won't be seeing any of those today and we can get in amongst it and have a look. Well, we want to get in and then we want to get out. Yep. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll get you in there and we'll get you back out. All right, boys, time to get a little bit sideways. Just uh, about to leave the uh, sealed road and uh, hit the dirt. Rock and roll. <laughs> nice and slippery, isn't it fun? It's a giant. Henbury Cattle Station. The cattle station surrounds the Henbury Craters Preserve. We think there might be meteorite fragments outside of the preserve. Ross, how are you going? Guys, this is uh, Ross. Hey, I'm Jeff. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, sir. Yeah. Ross, Steve. How you going? Lovely. Yeah. Go so on. you're the owner of the famous Henbury Cattle Station. That's right, yeah. Well, we're yep. very pleased to be here. Thanks yep. for meeting with us. The Henbury Cattle Farm surrounds the Crater Preserve and covers over 3,200 square miles, more than five times the size of the city of Los Angeles. So, and so your property extends all, all around here on all sides, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yep. What a huge spread. Yeah. That's the size of a small country. It is, yeah. <laughs> There's another one down there. Another meteorite crater? Yeah, the one a bit further down. You really? Know. That, that far away? Yeah, that one there. Like they're all part of this meteorite crater, and that's something you've seen yourself. Yeah. Was yep. that was that ever researched or established to, uh, to be a link? Shoemaker fellow, he he dug down in it just to see the impact and all that. The great Gene Shoemaker, yeah, the astronomer and geologist, was yeah. here. Dr. Eugene Shoemaker was a founder in the field of planetary science. He and his wife Carolyn spent much of their careers searching for undiscovered meteorite craters all over the world. Gene Shoemaker was uh, an astronomer, a geologist. He helped train the Apollo moon mission astronauts. And he was really a pioneer in impact studies, in studying large meteorite craters on the face of our planet. He died tragically here in Australia in a road accident in the outback. If the story that Ross told us is true and Gene Shoemaker discovered additional meteorite craters far from the known impact site, it dramatically increases the size of the strewn field. The fact that Ross actually met Gene and saw him working down there is very intriguing, it's something we may have to check out. If the mystery crater is related to the Henbury meteorite fall, it could expand the strewn field by 9 to 12 miles of potential hunting area and possibly contain even larger iron fragments. If the crater is unrelated, it could be an entirely new find to science. The crater will have to wait because the roads to this potential new hunting ground are for now impassable. Jeff and Steve stick to their original plan of hunting location two because it's in line with the largest known crater. So what we've uh, decided for you, um, because you're a, you've got prospecting experience and you're a rock hound and, and general all-round tough guy, we're gonna give you the big powerful detector the pulse star yep. now this detector won't pick up little things but if you go over something big listen to that yeah. you know it <laughs> so these are like the sniper's rifles and this is the cannon so if, if you hear that sound um, you let us know craters behind us to the southwest the debris field is supposed to have been in the northeast so I would say anywhere from about that hill over that kind of quadrant could be good all right, let's go. I got another target right here. That's 
to reading number 10, which is iron. Holy cow! Rock and roll! Whoa! I dropped my detector. I was so excited. Woo! Rock and roll! Whoa! <laughs> I got one right here. That's more like it. That is a Henbury Iron Meteorite. Nice, good-sized shrapnel fragment, about between half a kilometer and one kilometer from the craters. Beautiful. That is what I'm looking for. Let's see how we did. Wow, almost 89 grams. That is very exciting. One of the things we want to do out here is explore the northeast of the craters because it's called the scatter zone. And this is where fragments are believed to have been thrown out of the craters following the cataclysmic explosion. All right, where there's one, there's more. See what you, you detect there. Oh, a little bit, maybe just a little. Nearby, novice meteorite hunter Jason is catching on quickly to the tools of the trade and the terminology. 10. Oh, is that 10? It is. Ah, what's this doing out there? Media wrong. Here, see if that's. Yes. Yeah, All right. That's not so good. Jason, speaking. How close are you? Yeah, come over here and see if you can. Right there, close to the white rock. Okay. Doing good. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Okay. There we go. Okay, that was a couple inches down. Jeff's three hundred and sixty dollar find proves there are bigger space rocks to be found here. But Steve and Jason continue to dig up meteor wrongs and small meteorites. I wonder if there's any big ones out here. It's a good, good start. Oh, I think this guy's right on the surface. Look at that. There he is. Untouched for 4,600 years. How about that? What'd you find, Jeff? I got a target here, and I just pulled an 89 grammar out of the ground. So this is kind of very typical of a Henbury meteorite. Um, it's got some little sort of points and features on it. It's got that kind of reddish color. Obviously, feels like a piece of iron. Mm -hmm. Right? Heavy for its size. Oh. Letter J here. Nice. That's what we want. Spice rocks. He doesn't even care about mine. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Steve. Please let me see yours. <laughs> it is a letter J. J for Jason. You should probably give it to us. <laughs> now I got to find a bigger one. 90 grams or bigger. He didn't even care about mine. Well, this is a real good sign. 89 grams is a lot bigger than anything we found over on the other side around the little craters. Ah, oh, you guys make this look so easy. If you have the right tools and the right intelligence, it just really comes down to luck. If we were gonna grid this out, we we're gonna spend, you know, a week or two here, we could set up flags and we could make sure every square centimeters covered. Yep. Then that takes the luck out of it. A little bit of luck, a little bit of perseverance, but we know they're here, so we just got to stumble on them. <laughs> it's an old three-hour casing. It's from, uh, from a rifle. Someone's obviously been out here shooting uh, probably kangaroos, maybe uh, maybe camels. An official meteor wrong. Congratulations. <laughs> My first meteor wrong. And it works. <laughs> right in there. See if it jumps off. Ooh. Oh, now we got a bunch of shale here, which means this is there used to be a big rock here, and the outside of it has kind of corroded away over time. Okay. So these are pieces of meteorite. These come from outer space. Outback guide and novice hunter Jason is a quick study with the equipment and strategy. He hopes to make his first find before the sun sets, 
So, how are you feeling about that overall? I'm feeling good. I'm thinking of trying to increase my chances, and I thought I might concertina uh, across the, the blast zone rather than heading out along it. Good thinking, and I feel that meteorite hunting is about 50% science and strategy, and about 50%. I just think there's going to be one over there. <laughs> Hey, Eureka. Isn't that what the uh, 49ers used to say when they struck gold? Steve-o! Hey, what's up? I heard I got my very screaming. first meteorite. Yeah, wow. Congratulations. You know, there are a lot of meteorite hunters. There are a few meteorite finders. So I tell you, finding your, uh, your first meteorite is a little bit finding your first gold nugget. It's uh, bloody special, and uh, picking up a piece of rock that, that didn't come from here. It's come from somewhere out there. It's exhilarating. Did you get some? Eureka! No, <laughs> that's my spot. I was on my way there. <laughs> right there in the mud. Doop! Cutting. Cutting is right. It looks like we've got uh, some pretty heavy showers on their way in. Yeah, I think we're going to have to hit the road, boys, okay. and um, get ourselves out of here, eh? OK. You're the expert. Gold. The inclement weather forces an early end to an otherwise successful hunt, bringing their two-day total to $2,000. Well, maybe it's all hunted out now. Ten minutes into their drive, the storm hits and presents treacherous flood conditions. Left this one. Okay, good water crossing coming up here, guys. So just keep a nice, steady uh, power on. Start to lose traction, get a little bit more grunt. You guys right? like a true professional there, Jeff. Jason makes good on his promise to return the guys safely to home base. Today, we get the chance to meet up with uh, Dr. O'Neill, who's a crater impact specialist. Good to see you. Yeah. How things? Good to see you. you We've got some questions about the crater formation process. And I wanted to demonstrate something a little similar to that in the Henbury impact today. So I've got a good chunk of flour here. And we also have Dutch cocoa powder. And what a meteorite does when it impacts the Earth is it excavates a lot of rock and blasts it out and it leave, leaves a crater behind. So we've got this set up here where we've laid a, a nice little thin layer of cocoa over a bunch of flour. And so with an impactor actually hitting that, it should punch a hole through the cocoa in the flour. It will spout out all this ejector. And what you'll be left with is, in theory, really nice clean crater where you've actually seen through to the rocks underneath. Do you guys want to do the honors? Oh, oh yeah, that's oh. exactly what happened here. <laughs> Look at the ejector to the northeast. Yeah, yeah, it's just sprayed everywhere there. And, and a little bit less on other sides, much like the actual site here. <laughs> I'd say that's a very effective experiment. Now, after I got to see how that flower splattered out to the northeast, um, I'm kind of wanting to go back there to see if there's some more pieces that were missed. Dr. O'Neill's scatter test suggests the ejecta from the violent impact may have flown much farther than Jeff and Steve first anticipated. They head deeper to the northeast to location three, where they're certain the larger meteoric shrapnel would have landed. Nice strong target. It is really tucked down in the rocks here. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> wow, nice shape on this one. Very triangular flat back. Classic bit of Henbury. There it is. Wow. Oh, this is a cool looking one. I mean, it's one of the biggest ones I found on the trip. After listening to Dr. O'Neill, it made me say, hey, there's got to be more pieces out here. And so, uh, yeah, it paid off. Sometimes it pays off. Pays off to listen to your instructors. This very well illustrates what I mean about 
Meteorites being in the most inconvenient places. I got a target right at the edge of the cliff here. Okay, this is a little foolhardy even by my standards. Oh, there it is. There he is. That was a tricky one to get. My great friend Steve Arnold is uh, what I call a speed hunter. He likes to blast out there, cover as much ground as he can. I may be a bit more methodical. I like to figure out an area that I think is promising and really buckle down. Whoa, yeah. All right. <laughs> Gritting pays off. Steve's diligence also leads him to one of the most unusual discoveries of the trip. Wow. <sighs> this is cool. Hey, Jeff. That looks like impact eye. This is cool. Steve for Jeff. Go, Steve. In your research, did you um, re read anything about um, impactites? I know that impactites have been found here. I have a small piece in my collection, but I think they're quite rare. You know, they look a bit granular. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm finding out here. They look like charcoal, bubbly little pieces. Well, we'll pick some of them up. Impactites are earth rocks that have been altered by a meteoric impact. Oh, here's one. When a large meteorite hits the Earth, the heat and pressure generated by the impact transforms the terrestrial rock where the meteorite landed. Ooh, wow. Yeah, this most definitely is impact time. Hey, so it started out good. Found a couple pretty quick and then just ran out of everything. But then I found these. This is amazing. I've always been told it was extremely rare. I've only ever seen one piece. It took me a while to find these, and they were pretty few and far between. Well done. I found a lot of little stuff, and I found one nice one. Well, good job. All right, well, let's pack up. Head off into the sunset once again. On the final day of the hunt, Steve and Jeff are determined to make a big find before they return to the States. They want to test a theory that may lead them to large meteorites southwest of the main craters in location four. So the crater's just about there. If you imagine the meteorites flying that way and crashing down into the ground just on the other side, it's quite possible that some fragments whacked into the side of the range. So we may be completely within the zone of material that was dropped as the meteorites were flying towards their final destination. A real plan here is to try and establish an accurate direction of flight. If we can find even one piece out here, we line that up with the craters, and then we've got a really rock solid hunt line. So my suggestion mm -hmm. would be, drop you guys here and split up, and I'm gonna drive around to the other side, take a bearing on, on the su most southerly crater, walk up over the range, and then wave to you from there. This is a bit of a gamble, but I can't resist hiking up that range. There could be undisturbed meteorites up there. There's a little guy. Well, that's a good sign. There's one of the small craters, and the big ones are behind that. And that means I want to be headed up there somewhere. That looks pretty steep. Jeff believes his largest find is waiting for him on the jagged cliffs of the Bacon Range. So he takes the high road, while Steve and Jason cover the lowlands. There he is. Well, I'm rather cautiously optimistic about how this strategy is working out. I'm heading southwest from the craters, up the Bacon Range, and I've already found four pieces of which one is really quite nice. Oh my God! That's what I'm talking about! Wow! 
that is why we're up here on the Bacon Range. Good Lord. What a beautiful piece, almost completely buried. I'm gonna take a break. Good idea. Look. I can get a drink of water out of that. Rain water. Nothing better than rain water. Jeff for Steve. Uh, Steve here. What you doing? I just took a drink of water out of a hole in a rock. What are you doing? I just found a beautiful piece. Maybe 400 grams. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, really. Right, way up here on range, almost at the edge of the cliff. OK, so where are you at on this ridge? I'm, I'm on the Bacon Range. On the north side. All right, well, we'll kind of zigzag around here and uh, see where your head pops up over the top here. Roger that. Well, I'm kind of thinking he's going to pop out over here. But if he found something just over the ridge, if he found something up on the uh, up on the bacon, there's got to be something down here in the frying pan. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff's finding these things left and right, and I haven't found any all day. Getting skunked. I know I say it's not all about finding the meteorites, but at the end of the day, you still want to come home with meteorites. Oh! Watch it. These boulders are a little loose. I'm about to start an avalanche here. I'm getting good at this. Here we go. Out of the ground. Good sized target. One of the larger pieces we've found so far. God, that's a gorgeous piece. On the cliffs, Jeff's plan is paying off as he makes multiple large finds worth about $2,000. Steve and Jason, however, are having little success down below. Sounds pretty good. Oh, yay! Well, not a giant one. But I didn't get skunked today! <laughs> oh, that sounds really good. <laughs> it's exposed on the surface. I think this is a mostly buried meteorite. Wow. No way! Oh, wow. What an amazing shape. That is stunning. Talk about shrapnel. That is an exquisite piece. That's one of the nicest Henry's I've ever seen. And it's been sitting there for 4,600 years. That is extraordinary. And there's nothing on Earth like this. That is a 10 out of 10 piece. One of the most fabulous meteorites I've ever found. Jeff, for Steve. Hey, Jeff, it's Steve. What's up? Why don't we meet right at the top of the ridge, and then I can show you where I've been hunting. Very good. See you in a minute. How's it going, mate? Oh, uh, couldn't be much better, really. I'm having an absolute blast up here. All right. You want to see something cool? Sure. Oh! Wow! Wow! Have you ever seen a more shrapnel piece of shrapnel than that? Wow. Amazing. Yeah, I was pretty floored. Good on you, mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs> well, boys, I feel like I've done 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. <laughs> That's hard work. Yes, now you know the truth about meteor hunting. Oh, yeah. Not as easy as I thought it was. Pretty fruitful day for you there, young Jeff. I'm very pleased. Before Steve and Jeff head back to the States, they have one more piece of unfinished business. You'll remember during our meeting with Ross, he mentioned these supposed mystery craters west of the known crater field. And Gene Shoemaker was apparently here researching that site with his wife, Carolyn. And I've met her a couple of times over the years, so I thought it would be worth asking if she remembered Jean actually doing any research at that okay. spot. Hello? Hello, Carolyn? Yeah. 
Good afternoon. This is Jeff Notkin and Steve Arnold calling you all the way from Australia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Ross had mentioned to us that you had investigated two possible small craters. We wondered if you had uh, any recollection or, or thoughts about, those, about that site. Well, one of those small craters probably was the result of a meteorite impact, but we were not able to prove it. Steve and Jeff are very excited by the prospect of an unconfirmed crater in the area. They hope to be the first hunters to conclude if it was indeed caused by a meteorite. In order to get to the site of these mystery craters, we've got two obstacles to overcome. The first is we do not have exact directions. Secondly, we don't even know if we can physically get there. We have to travel a long distance on a dangerous road. All right. Go to the tree and take a left. And huh? Hang a left, exactly. <laughs> That's the way we do directions out in the bush. Uh, so essentially, uh, up here is uh, where the suspected crater may be. Unfortunately, today, I, uh, I don't think she's going to be uh, safe to get up there. We finally managed to make our way down to the dirt road that leads to these suspected craters, and it's been completely blown out by a flood. There's just no way through. There is no way a vehicle is getting down that road. Well, it'd be nice to try to figure this mystery out, but it doesn't look like uh, it's going to happen on this trip. The mystery crater will have to wait until their next adventure. But this trip has been a great success. Jeff and Steve weigh out their total findings from the Henbury Crater Hunt. In total, they recovered $100 in shale, $1,000 in impactites, and a whopping $8,700 in Henbury iron meteorite fragments for a grand total of $9,800. Overall, not a bad expedition, no, especially fantastic. considering all the rain we had to fight through. And some of the pieces are just exceptional. Well, partner, I think it's time to head off. Hit the road. I guess it's about time to start the long trip home. Yep. We came, we saw, we conquered, we found some stuff. It's been a good trip and uh, a very, very memorable trip at that. Memories are worth something, aren't they?